everyone, my name is Justin and I'm a third year cognitive science major being advised by Dr. Judy Fan in this project. Today, I'll be talking about how people draw visual concepts at different levels of abstraction. But what does that really mean? When we look out onto the world, we do not perceive a meaningless array of photons. Instead, we see the world in terms of familiar objects in various places in space. We automatically parse the world into semantically meaningful chunks. For example, with a single glance, we understand that this image is composed with flowers in a meadow, with trees and hills in the background. We can also think about objects at different levels of abstraction. For example, when we look at this image, we can think of this object as a specific cat, grumpy cat, or we could also think about grumpy cat as being a member of a general category, that containing all cats. So grumpy cat is an example of an object instance, and the notion of a cat is an example of an object category. We think of objects at different levels of abstraction, in other words. Nowhere is this ability to think of objects at different levels of abstraction more clear than when we study drawings. Specifically, people can use drawings to communicate information about objects at different levels of specificity, from highly abstract representations evocative of catness, to this drawing of a kitten, to this highly realistic painting of a specific cat named Charlie. What cognitive mechanisms underlie our ability to communicate object information at different levels of abstraction? We hypothesize that when we produce a drawing, take for example, of a hand holding a pencil, there are two key cognitive mechanisms at play. Visual perception, how the brain transforms the light coming in through our eyes into visual experience, and prior knowledge about objects and their relationships with other objects, for example, our knowledge of hands and how they relate to pencils. We hypothesize that part of what allows us to draw things at different levels of abstraction stems from the relative contributions of visual perception and prior knowledge. To explore this hypothesis, we first designed a pilot study where we manipulated the contribution of perception in drawings by either showing people a specific example of what to draw or not. When participants did not have access to a specific example, they were prompted with a word. They were then asked to make their drawings identifiable to someone trying to guess the original word they saw, as we can see. This leads participants to draw an object category. We denote this case the text condition. On the other hand, when participants did have access to a specific example, they were prompted with an image. In this case, the participants were specifically asked to make their drawings identifiable to someone trying to guess the image they saw from a lineup of similar images within the same object category. This pushes them to draw an object instance. We denote this case the photo condition. In what ways were sketches made into two conditions different? We first look at some of the sketches the participants made. Looking holistically, it seems like drawings made in the text condition were more variable compared to drawings in the photo condition. This makes sense since sketches in the photo condition are more specific, for in the photo condition the total space of sketches available is constrained. In what other ways might these sketches differ? One possibility is that sketches of object instances and categories differ in terms of their qualitative content, the higher level semantic features of an object, for example, a cat's tail. Specifically, it's possible that sketches in the photo condition have more relevant semantic parts diagnostic of their object category, as a visual format may lend participants to draw more informative sketches than in the text condition. If so, sketches in the photo condition would be more recognizable than those in the text condition. To test this, we extracted, we extracted feature representations of our sketches from pre-tuned neural networks trained on natural images to extract high-level semantic features and then we performed image classification on those features to get a recognizability metric. Essentially, it quantifies how much high-level evidence is in each sketch for being in their respective category. We found that, indeed, sketches of object instances were more recognizable than sketches of object categories. Another possible difference between the sketches is that people make more detailed drawings when drawing instances than when drawing categories. In other words, the greater recognizability of object instances is explained by the greater detail put into those drawings. If so, participants would use more strokes to produce sketches of object instances than sketches of object categories. Surprisingly, we did not find this to be the case. 
the number of strokes was roughly equal between the two conditions. These results show us that there is a difference in the semantic content of sketches that is not explained by differences in detail between the conditions. Would we still see this result if, we, if participants could see an image when drawing both object instances and categories? In an upcoming study, we plan to dissociate the availability of an image with the goal of drawing either an object instance or an object category. By doing so, we can ask deeper questions about human mental representation. For example, if people recruit abstract prototypes or if people recruit instantiated prototypical exemplars from memory. To explore these new ideas, we are designing an upcoming study with a larger number of both categories and stimuli within each category. In the pilot study, there are only three images in the category, and each of these images were highly prototypical and had very little variation in pose. This could have biased the sketches to contain more category level evidence than if sketches were queued with more variable images, which is why in the next study we plan to use a broader, more diverse data set. In total, we selected 32 images from 32 categories from the Sketchy database. With this larger set of stimuli, we're able to characterize our images in a more detailed manner. Furthermore, we can vary drawings by their prototypicality based crowdsource ratings, and the larger data set affords instance level classification, a valuable tool for understanding drawings at different levels of specificity. Finally, I'd like to thank HDSI for making this project and this presentation possible. So thank you. Any questions or comments?